Hello again, this is Rudy Giuliani back with another episode of Rudy's Common Sense. I mean, this has been a very good week or, or week and a half for truth and justice. First, we had the New York Times admit, pay uh, about line 28 or so, but still admit that the hard drive from hell that actually was fully authenticated 16 months ago and before the end of the 2020 election is absolutely true. Now, they picked out one little measly crime or two to focus on some kind of tax evasion and some kind of failure to re register, which is about, um, now this would be like convicting John Gotti of uh, not paying a traffic ticket. Traffic ticket. Um, well, they admitted that the hard drive is true. Well, I have the hard drive and had it for, I was the first one that got it and the first one to put it out. And I gave it to the New York Post. And so I would just summarize it very simply without uh, uh, going into great detail. The, the hard drive contains um, 30 years of crime as described in detail by Hunter Biden, not by me, with uh, very, very significant corroborating documents of uh, money laundering, bribery, contracts like for $30 million a year from Chinese communists to Joe Biden. Uh, it traces uh, in clear language uh, the money that went to Joe Biden, 50% uh, in general. Um, that comes from Hunter, not me. But in any event, the hard drive um, lays out a level of criminality uh, so far unheard of uh, in America. I mean, we, there may have been presidents that were more corrupt and more crooked than Joe Biden, but history certainly doesn't reveal one. That was a 30-year uh, uh, crook, 30 years of bribery amounting to, well, excess of 50 million. I'd say that's pretty safe. 31 million from China alone, our biggest enemy. So that, the truth of that is out now. It's going to take a while for the liars of the establishment to accept it because, you know, among other things, they hid it from you before uh, the election. I did everything I could to get it out to you. I gave it to the Post. I put it on my, I put it on my uh, rudyscommonsense.com. I, I had put it on, a lot of it on the rudyscommonsense.com almost a year earlier with pictures, documents, trials. I proved it every way possible, except I was accused of being a Russian agent, accused of being a liar, a scoundrel, kind of the way uh, I am being accused now falsely about the election. And that's all going to turn out to be true also. Well, everything about what I said about the Bidens has now turned out to be true. So this was a good week. It got to be a really better week for the truth, not for the country. When uh, uh, Joe Biden made an extraordinary statement, an extraordinary statement, which um, why don't we why don't we listen to him saying it? Uh, because I think I mean only he can say it um, as inartfully and inarticulately <laughs> as it can be said. So let's have him say it, and then let's, let's, let's find out what it is. I believe in the world economy, not just the world economy, in the world. It occurs every three or four generations. As one of, them, as the, uh, one of the top military people said to me in a secure meeting the other day, 60, 60 million people died between 1900 and 1946. And uh, since then, we established a liberal world order, and that hadn't happened in a long while. A lot of people died, but nowhere near the chaos. And now is a time when things are shifting. We're going to there's going to be a new world order out there, and we've got to lead it. And we've got to unite the rest of the free world in doing it. So anyway, so I mean, we've got two parts to this, right? The first part is that somehow for the last thirty years, he believes we've been under the new liberal order. Well, I don't know. Somebody should tell Ronald Reagan that, huh? Somebody should tell Bill Clinton that when he when he said we're finished with welfare as we know it, and he spent the last six years of his uh, presidency being a conservative because he got the heck kicked out of him after two years, and he he um, 
He basically just adopted the uh, Republican program of uh, the, the, the crime bill that uh, Biden now runs away from, uh, which I helped, dra- I helped draft it. Got a letter from Bill Clinton thanking me. I'm not running away from it. Um, but he is. And it's actually his only, his only legislative achievement. He's running away from that. Uh, so according to him, we went through a whole new liberal period from over the 70s to now. Well, that's, of course, f- total fantasy. I mean, we had the tremendous prosperity of the Reagan era. We had the short-lived prosperity of the Trump era. But now, now we're going to set the new world order. Yes, he said it. The new world order, the Great Reset. That's what his uh, pal Trudeau says, the, new, the, the Great Reset. You, do you know that th- this has been dismissed as a, um, like a right-wing uh, conspiracy? This whole discussion of new world order and Great Reset. It's a big right-wing, right-wing conspiracy. And... Um, I, it's probably not true of all of them, but you know, since Hillary Clinton used that expression, um, w- what was it? Oh, the Monica Lewinsky was a va- was part of the vast right wing conspiracy when she damn well knew that Monica Lewinsky was telling the truth, right? And they trashed her for six months, as Hillary did maybe thirty other women. From the time, uh, the, whatever they say, vast right wing conspiracy or right wing conspiracy or whatever. It almost always turns out to be true, like, well, like uh, Russian collusion. They lied about that, turned out to be untrue. And when Republicans would deny it, it was part of the right-wing conspiracy. So Biden just mentions the New World Order. He's going to Europe now, and he's going to work out the New World Order. Think it would have been nice if he explained it to the American people first? I mean, what is this new world order? Have you ever heard of this? I mean, a president of the United States flies off to Europe after having created enormous problems in the world. I mean, the the people dying in Afghanistan. Ukraine never had to happen if we had a president with half a brain. Hmm? President who, who knew how to hold his cards next to his chest and not give away the fact that we'd Oh, we'll never use military power. So now he says uh, he's going to Europe and and we're going to have a new world order after having a liberal order for whatever that was. So uh, would you care to share it with us? Would you care to share with us what this new world order is? So in the absence of a, a, a document from the administration laying out the new world order, could I, could I just read to you what this says and see how familiar this sounds to the things you've been hearing uh, in general and particularly on this podcast, particularly the ones like uh, Express Train to Marxism, uh, the ones where um, particularly near the end of last year, I sort of tried to take a look at how far have we gotten to be in communist country. Um, the, 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 the descriptions of... Um, Engels and Marx and Mao and Lenin and, and, and the programs they have for turning a country and how many of them are going on in our country and have been successful, or uh, the, the, the program of Black Lives Matter, which I know it's hard because the phony media, the corrupt media hides this. Black Lives Matter is a communist organization. I don't have to prove that to you. The r- people who run it tell you they are committed Educated Marxists. <laughs> Just go look at it. Even enough of it has been preserved online. You can still find it. If you can't find it, just go back to my podcast. So here's the New World Order, supposedly a UN agenda. I don't know if this is a legit document or not. What I can tell you is it sounds pretty good based on the agenda of the progressive Democrats, the Black Lives Matter, the stuff that comes out of Joe Biden's mouth when he's reading things. And there's something about it that actually makes a lot of sense because all three of those organizations that I mentioned, I didn't mention Antifa, are funded by George Soros. And he's pretty close to the biggest funder of each of them. Biggest funder of Black Lives Matter, 
biggest funder of Antifa, biggest funder of the Democrat Party. So the first one is one world government. So this has been a, 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 uh, a goal of Black Lives Matter, Soros, pretty much, uh, pretty much John Kerry in word and, and Joe Biden in deed. Let me explain to you. In the first debate between Bush and Kerry, uh, which many people thought Kerry won, I went on television shortly thereafter with Chris Wallace, who said to me, how are you going to wiggle your way out of this one? I said, we won this debate. And he said, oh, come on. How is that? He said, because uh, uh, Kerry said something that will kill him. He said that, um, what would you do if America were attacked? This was like that issue about the three o'clock in the morning call. It was still in people's minds. And. I mean, Biden turned out to be the guy that can't take a three o'clock in the morning call. But in any event, Kerry said, uh, well, I would uh, I'd assess the level of the attack and then I would check with our allies so that we had a joint strategy. And Bush said, I talked to my generals and I hit him back as fast and as hard as possible. I said, uh, Bush can win. Ameri Americans uh, aren't going to give their sovereignty away to some world organization. I mean, Biden's going over there. Um, he's not even the leader anymore. I mean, those European governments have to be looking at him like he's a fool. After, after he withdrew troops before civilians in Afghanistan and got them killed by terrorists, uh, since he spent a month and a half dithering with Putin every day, uh, predicting that Putin was going to invade, Putin just played him out, played him out, let him make a fool out of himself on the world stage, let him demonstrate that he's afraid of using American military power, and having assured himself of that, went in and, and, and is now raping Ukraine, with Joe Biden uh, always uh, responding too little too late, and still holding back uh, MiG fighters that Poland wants to give to Ukraine, and all they need is for us to backfill. We won't even do that. Got to send a big signal that um, we're kind of weak and we're not going to make a decision unless somebody else in the world makes it for us. So this one world government sounds like a pretty legitimate part of the new world order. I mean, Soros has always wanted that. Black Lives Matter wants it. A lot of the Democrat Party are constantly talking about, you know, we got to be, I mean, we can't do anything if our allies don't agree to it. And in this case, you know, we have the, we have the Obama doctrine of being, of leading by following, which has got to be the dumbest thing anybody ever said, because leading by following means following. See, if you're leading by following, somebody else is leading. That's the leader and you're following, but this is we're in, um, we're in an era where the Democrat Party believes you are idiots and fools because they don't believe you can think. The New York Times doesn't think you can think. I mean, they, they would write all the time about Obama leading by following. Don't they have enough of an intellect to realize that's a contradiction? But it is the truth, which is why a one world government makes a lot of sense. One world cashless currency. This is a goal of, um, this is clearly a goal of Soros. A little later, I'll play, uh, I'll play a little interview with Soros back in 2010. And you'll see that this is clearly, he wants to destroy the dollar. <laughs> Imagine a loyal American wanted to destroy the dollar. I said, imagine a loyal American wanting to destroy the dollar. I, I, I've yet to see anything that he's loyal to. Um, a one world central, world central bank, hmm? part of the new world order. That, that sounds right. That sounds right out of Soros's playbook, right? It does to me. Hmm? Well, I mean, 
Sounds that way. Sounds like it's right out of Klaus Schwab's playbook. Hmm. One world military? Can't say I've seen that one. So that one I'd have to cross out. The end of national sovereignty, 100%. Soros is all about that. So are the communists. Read Putin. Read Putin on what Lenin was all about. He wanted to wipe out the Russian nationality. Soros wants to wipe out all nationalities. The end of national sovereignty. What is it to not make a decision about whether to defend yourself until you check what other people? Haven't we given away our sovereignty by opening up the southern border? I mean, the invasion on our southern border is bigger than the invasion in Ukraine. It's also, I think, cost more lives. Pretty close. Look at fentanyl. Fentanyl is all a product of illegal immigration. It all comes from overseas. It doesn't grow here. And it comes across the southern border because we don't patrol it, because Biden has opened it up to record numbers of people. If he tells you he's patrolling that border, he is lying. Just go interview anybody there. The Democrats on the border have turned against him. We have an invasion going on on our southern border, and there is only one source for fentanyl, and that is mostly China, but overseas. And it comes in almost exclusively through the Mexican cartels. So, is that the end of national? If you don't have borders, you don't have sovereignty. If you can't make a decision for yourself, but you got to get a bunch of other countries to agree with you about what's in your best interest, number one, you don't have much sovereignty. And number two, you sure don't sound terribly confident in your own judgment. Uh, there, there was a time in which we led the world. You know, back during the Second World War, we led the world. Now, Poland wants to give Ukraine MiGs, and we're afraid. I bet there are European nations that want to do the no-fly zone. We're afraid. Maybe we should be, but we're afraid. And if we were just afraid of that, fine. We're afraid of everything. There's no reason to fear the United States. None. Well, that, that, might, that might sound nice if you lived in a world of good people. We live in a world of homicidal maniacs. Yeah, that's what they are. You don't think Putin's a homicidal maniac? You don't think the Ayatollah is a ho homicidal maniac? You don't think that she, Jinping, is a homicidal maniac? They've killed 60 million of their own people. They're wiping out the Uyghurs. They're wiping out Christians. They used to kill girl babies. We are in a world of homicidal maniacs with a president who can't figure out how to walk across the street. He wouldn't know the difference between the red button and the green button. And then we have as the vice president, Russia is a big country. Ukraine is a small country. They are right next to each other. And they're fighting with each other. Whew. Oh, and then there's Pelosi. I, well, I, let's, okay, we're getting off topic here. Then there's Pelosi and then Schumer. Oh, my. Would you please change this in 2022 at the end of this year? Huh? Please, big time. Kick them in the backside so they straighten out. I believe the Democrat Party can be a positive force in this country if you get rid of the crooks and the idiots at the top. The end of all privately owned property. Well, let's look at two ways here. That is a big part of the Black Lives Matter agenda, supported by the, 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 the link between all these George Soros. Biggest biggest supporter of Black Lives Matter, biggest of Antifa, biggest supporter of the Democratic Party. Uh, right on the Black Lives Matter manifesto is ending private property. Also, with the tax rates, 
that the progressive, retrogressive, socialist, communist Democrats have imposed, like in New York, it's over 60%. When the government takes more of your income than you're allowed to keep, I think you're in a government-dominated economy, which is moving close to the end of private property. Really, really close. And then they intend to have it go up even further. And then they're allied with people who have that as part of their agenda. So can you see the end of privately owned property? We're getting close. We're about 60% of the way there, if not 70% of the way there. The end of the family unit, major goal of Black Lives Matter, major goal of the Communist Party. Get the kid away by two years old. That's what Black Lives Matter says. Now, they have taken it out of their website. But they do it. And they aim for it. Because they want to brainwash them. Because what they're teaching them doesn't make sense. It's not logical. Nor is socialism. Socialism isn't logical. Socialism, people at one point or another inevitably re rebel against it. Because it defies human nature. I work my tail off. You don't. You get the same amount of money I do. Not enough to support my family. My family's starving and you're not working. And you got the same amount of money as I do. That's what's going on inside Ukraine. That's why Ukraine is fighting back. They have tasted democracy. They've tasted free enterprise. And they're not giving it up unless you kill them. You don't see that in China as much, a little bit. You see it in Hong Kong. You see it in Shanghai. But a lot of China's never tasted freedom. You see it in parts of Russia. But a lot of Russia hasn't tasted freedom. Ukraine has. And it is an example of you give people a taste of freedom, they're inevitably going to win or you're going to kill them. Well, now let's take a short break and we'll be right back. Think your homeowner's insurance covers home title fraud? <laughs> Think again. And neither does your common identity theft program. The FBI calls home title fraud one of the fastest growing crimes, which is why you need to go to HomeTitleLock.com, America's leader in home title protection. Here's the problem. The deed to your home is the only document that proves you own it. And the deeds to all of our homes now are online. In minutes, a criminal can find and forge your name off the deed to your home and refile as the new owner, like Jeff, who spent a fortune in legal fees after a thief forged himself onto the deed to Jeff home and took out loans. Jeff didn't have home title lock then. He does now. Or Deborah, who thought our common identity theft service would protect her. Then a criminal got onto the deed to a home and had her evicted. Deborah has home title lock now. HomeTitleLock.com is your peace of mind and the deed to your home is protected visit hometitlelock.com hometitlelock.com this is rudy giuliani and we're back again trying to figure out what joe biden means by the new world order and since he won't tell us i'm going to this document which may or may not be accurate i mean uh, uh, authentic but it sure seems with a few exceptions pretty much on target as a uh, summary of the aims and goals of Black Lives Matter, which is an intricate part of the Democrat Party since it's funded by the same guy Soros. And, and the Democratic Party will never say anything bad about Black Lives Matter, even though they've had a lot of people killed and they are always advocating for killing police officers. And this is very much the AOC... Uh, Agenda, the you know what do they call them? The squad, the uh, the crazy communists. I mean, they they're a bunch of crazy communists. And you know, Biden buys into a lot of this. But this one here, I mean, this one here is a this one here is a is sort of a is kind of a Soros Gates uh, proposition: depopulation, control of population growth, and population density. Gee, that sounds an awful lot like stuff that's been written by Gates and. Basically, what China does, right? How about this one? 
mandatory multiple vaccines. Now, who's in favor of that? (laughs) The autocratic Democrats who have mandated it rather than get it passed. I don't know that any, I don't know that any legislature anywhere in the United States, I could be wrong, but certainly not a lot, has passed a law mandating it. This happens by Democrat governor or president dictate. That's called dictatorship. Mandatory multiple vaccines. Universal basic income. (laughs) Part of the progressive agenda. Microchipped society for purchasing, travel, tracking, and controlling. Sounds like Silicon Valley. Definitely a part of the Democrat conspiracy. They're the ones who did all the censorship. Remember when the hard drive came out? What happened? Twitter took the New York Times, a New York Post off Twitter. So you wouldn't find out the facts you needed to know about your president being a crook. Or the guy running for presidency being a crook. Can you imagine that happening in a free country? I mean, now... Uh, Democrats who were informed of even just a little piece of the hard drive and the crimes there, 10% of them say they wouldn't have voted for Biden, which means he would not now be screwing up the world the way he is. So before you get to the election counting fraud, how about his being elected under fraudulent circumstances? Perpetrated by the Times, the Washington Post, NBC, CBS. ABC, MSNBC, and uh, the and the Silicon Valley oligarchs, who now have more power than a lot of government officials, in conjunction with the crooked Democratic Party. <laughs> Uh, so now I'll go down these other two here. We'll skip a few. How about government raised uh, children? Government owned and controlled schools, uh, colleges, and universities. So uh, let me tell you that that is in the Black Lives Matter agenda. Get them away at two years old. No support of private schools or parochial schools. No alternatives to public education. Or how about. Um, how about the candidate for Governor McAuliffe, this close to, to, to uh, the Clinton, saying that parents should have no say in the education of their children? Or the author of 1619, New York Times, saying that she doesn't want to have any role in the, in the, in the education of her children because she doesn't know much about that, even though she wrote a history, a false one, for your children. Do you realize what these people are doing to you? Do you realize what they're doing to you? She writes a history to brainwash your kids, and then she says she doesn't want to interfere with public schools because she doesn't know anything about education. It's because her history is garbage. It's worse than garbage. It's obscenities against the United States of America, the greatest country on earth. I am not saying that America hasn't done very wrong things, horrible things, but then compared to the rest of the world, How come people want to live here and not there? Why, when we open our borders, do people flock here? Nobody flocks to Russia. How many people are going to Venezuela, AOC? Anybody flocking to China? What are you, stupid? Traitors? Insane? If you can't see this is the greatest country on earth, why the hell don't you leave? It's been this way a long time. You're not going to change it. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to change our form of government, our values. You're trying to brainwash our kids. Government raised children. Government owned and controlled schools, colleges, and universities. I don't know about just the end of private transportation and owning cars. All businesses owned by governments and corporations. Well, that boy, that's part of the, that's part of the, um, that's part of that whole s- stakeholder capitalism of Klaus Schwab. Hmm? 
uh, it's a sort of a it's, it's a sort of a runaround on communism. Restriction of non-essential air travel. Well, that's an AOC, you know, Green New Deal. Yeah, good luck with that. Uh, <laughs> the upper levels of the of the of the Communist Party will not agree to that. You may be subjected to that. Uh, John Kerry, you're going to take John Kerry's private plane away? Good luck. Good luck. You could take, I mean, Biden. What's the use of flying Biden around the world? He, they might as well just put him down in his basement and have him virtual. I mean, the guy shows up. He's got to be an embarrassment. Now, I don't want to mention a couple of the things that have happened when he's there personally. You think this is really impressive when he walks in? Better if he stayed home and we didn't, we didn't uh, send all that, all that carbon. Wow. In this big, big universe. Imagine what it's going to do. Wow. Do you ever think how hypocritical it is that we're buying uh, oil from Russia or we want to buy oil from Iran or uh, Venezuela, but we could have the same, we could produce the same oil here. So how does that help the environment? Hmm? Isn't it the same whether it's burned there or here? I don't know. I'm not a scientist, you know. I'm not a nuclear engineer or I'm just a very logical person. And it seems to me there's no net gain. Oh, yes, there is. There's a net gain for their economy, a net loss for our economy, and a big loss of jobs for our people, the people you don't like, the deplorable people the ones the Democrat Party has tossed out a long time ago, pretending to be the party of the people, the way they've double-crossed the urban black community for years. Human beings concentrated into human settlement zones, cities. Well, they sure like cities because they ruin them, right? You, I mean, what is happening to our American cities today under... 10 years, 20 years, 50 years of Democrat rule is obscene. And the other thing that's obscene is that we're stupid enough to accept it. The end of irrigation, I don't understand. <laughs> I, they couldn't have meant the end of immigration. The end of private farms and grazing livestock. Well, that's just typical. Black Lives Matter, co communism. The end of single family homes, you can see that in the policies of the progressive Democrats. Restricted land use that serves human needs. No, 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 no. That serves their needs. The ban of natural non-synthetic drugs and na naturopathic medicine. Not sure I understand that completely, but I understand the next one. And boy, oh boy, is that part of the Democrat agenda. The end of fossil fuels. Go talk to the people in West Virginia. Go talk to the people in Pennsylvania. Go talk to the people in Ohio that are out of work. And the oil and natural gas that we should get, we could get from fracking, employing thousands, tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands of Americans, we're buying somewhere else and helping mostly autocratic dictatorships, homicidal governments, and our Americans out of work. Tell me, tell me this isn't communist inspired. If it isn't, these people are completely crazy. They just want to hurt their country for no reason. So where does this come from? Where, where does where does this where what are the what's the genesis of this? I'm gonna I'm gonna take you to two people. I'm gonna take a short break. I'm gonna show you a little something and, and talk to you about two different people that uh, have a lot to do with this. Because I'm not sure if we asked Biden what he meant by new world order. I'm not sure he get past the second sentence, and Harris might not even get to the first sentence. But they're doing it. They're being manipulated, and they are moving us toward com communism. This is about the biggest admission we've had 
I mean, new world order is a Leninist concept, a globalist economy, a non uh, a non ethnic, non national world. Wipe out all nationalities. Sounds a little like Hitler too, doesn't it? Well, we'll be right back. Not long ago, Mike Lindell, the inventor of my pillow, and his team fit me for my very own my pillow. They also introduced me to their wide assortment of other incredible products, like their mattress topper, their sheets, towels, slippers, and more. Sleep is incredibly important to me, and I can assume for all of you. It's time you give my pillow a try and see for yourself. Listeners have helped build my pillow into the incredible company it is today. And Mike Lindell wants to give back to all of you. You can get great discounts on my pillow products by going to MyPillow.com right now and seeing each of the specially priced items, including those in the radio listener special square. You're going to see rotational offers up to 66% off on products like their pillows, mattress topper, Giza sheets, but also new products like their slippers, weighted blankets, robes, and waffle blankets. All my pillow products come with a 60-day money-back guarantee. Enter promo code Rudy for these great specials. That's mypillow.com and use the promo code Rudy. Welcome back. And now let's see if we can find um, we can't we don't have time for all of it, but I'll give you a couple of hints and then over subsequent podcasts. What I mean, we'll develop this. We can even go back to prior ones and show you how we've warned you about this six months ago, a year ago, a year and a half ago. But I think I think listening to so- George Soros, who kind of uh, connects all this together, this is the guy who uh, biggest contributor to the Democrat Party and Biden, biggest contributor to Black Lives Matter, biggest contributor uh, to um, to Antifa, and for the longest time. Uh, running this open world foundation, this one world foundation, really, and being a proponent of one world and wanting to destroy Americanism, which may explain that what he's done to us. I mean, this is the man probably most responsible for the crime wave in America, because the cities that set records for homicide last year, like Philadelphia, more homicides than ever, ever, ever in the history of Philadelphia, has a district attorney that puts violent criminals back out on the street on purpose. And so does St. Louis. And so does Chicago. And so does Manhattan now. And so does, oh, I could go, uh, Los Angeles, where they're trying to remove them. Uh, San Francisco, where they tried to remove them. All those cities, many of whom set records last year for homicide. And if they didn't, they had a lot of them. A lot of homicide, a lot of murder, a lot of destruction of African-Americans. 70% or so in most of these cities are African-Americans who are being slaughtered. And Soros put the district attorneys in who are putting the criminals back out on the street, who are doing the murders, and the Democratic Party and the black members, officials of the Democratic Party, don't do anything! And if that doesn't get you mad, nothing will. It got me mad enough so that I ended that in New York and saved more black lives than any mayor in history. And they're doing just the opposite. They're getting them killed. And biggest single group responsible for it are the Soros multi-million dollar funded useless district attorneys who put criminals back out on the street and their communities are outraged. And he started funding it in 2016, because he wants to destroy America so we become part of one world, one world government, whatever the hell that is, run by Soros, I guess. I just want you to listen to this now. This, this goes back to 2010, and there's a reason I'm going to play 2010, because none of what he's talking about happens. I mean, he's not right. What sort of a financial deal should Obama be seeking to strike when he travels to China next month? No, I think this would be the time because you really need to bring China into the creation of a new uh, um, uh, world order, financial world order. Uh, 
they are kind of reluctant members of the IMF. They play along, but they don't make much of a contribution because it's not their, uh, uh, not their institution. Their share is, is not commensurate. Their voting rights are not commensurate to their weight. So I think you need a, a new world order that China has to be part of the process of creating it, and they have to buy in. They have to own it the same way as, let's say, the United States owns the Washington consensus, the current order. And you believe that? Do you believe what he said in 2010? And now we fast forward to 2022, and we have a China that has uh, armed itself to the point that it has a stronger navy than the United States. We've got a China that looks like it's on the verge of invading Taiwan and is supporting Russia in its, in its savage, barbaric attack on Ukraine. Hmm? We got a China that in the period of time that this, this whatever he is, uh, talked about giving China a bigger role. I don't, how many millions of people have they killed? We've got a China that loosed uh, uh, COVID on the world. How many millions of people did they kill? How many Uyghurs have they killed? How many Christians have they killed? How many, who knows, their own people have they killed? China is a murderous dictatorship, homicidal communist dictatorship that wants to control the world by 2048 with the connivance of that man. Now, I don't know what's wrong with this guy. If you go into his background, and you see what he was responsible for as a young man, it might be that the guilt of that has driven him crazy because at one point, back in the 90s, he said he had no guilt about it. And when they tell you you're anti-Semitic if you attack him, Anti-Semitic? Wow. No way, babes. <laughs> Want to start talking about people who have hurt the Jewish people? <laughs> Just look into his background. And you'll see what I'm... Go back to the 60-minute interview. And you'll see what I'm talking about. There's something seriously wrong with this man, and he is destroying this country. He's destroying it domestically with those DAs. We got a crime wave going on that he funded. And he's trying to destroy us internationally. He wants to make China stronger. That was uh, 2010. Now, let's listen to a little bit more and we'll see who's contributing to this, who's behind this new world order, this one world. So Soros can be more important, so we can be wealthier, so we can have more control. I don't know. Does it at some point need also to decline against the renminbi? Does there need to be some sort of a new global currency deal? Yes. No, I, I, I believe that basically the, 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 the system is broke and needs to be reconstituted. We cannot afford to have the, the kind of uh, chronic and mounting imbalances in, in uh, international uh, uh, finance. Uh, so you need a new uh, currency system. So basically what uh, Soros here is doing is attacking the United States dollar. And he wants it removed as the uh, world currency so that a one world currency can be established. Now, what American attacks the American dollar? I mean, he's about as loyal to America as he was to his childhood friends. I guess if you're disloyal early in your life, you remain that way, just like Biden. If you're a crook and a cheat in law school or a cheat in law school, you end up being a crook all your life or a cheat all your life. But I mean, I don't know if you've ever been exposed to this guy, but this is about the most dangerous guy in America. So let's... Uh, let's um, Let's get a little more of an understanding of how this agenda that we've talked about, the new world agenda that uh, uh, Biden slipped and mentioned today and took it from a 
right-wing conspiracy to a reality, except he hasn't told us what it is, but his big fundraiser and donor is doing a pretty good job here of telling us way back in 2010 what it is. You could actually create, internationally create uh, currency uh, through special drawing rights. And this is, the, uh, we've done it. We issued $250 billion. Uh, and that's a very, very uh, useful step. Except the, the um, uh, rich countries uh, don't actually need the additional reserves. So they, all they can do is put it in the shop window and say, we've got that, that much extra. But they can't actually use it. Now, I think they, it could be used. It could be used to provide global public goods. Uh, the, the rich countries could uh, put their allocations in escrow. Uh, the problem is that there is a cost to using SDRs. Well, I mean, there you see what they're talking about in this agenda, and really, which is at, at the core of climate change, which is the redistribution of wealth from the rich countries to the poor countries. Just move the money. Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, he could, he could just give all his money to the poor countries if he wanted to. I don't see him doing that. Got like too nice a tie. He looks a little too fat and uh, a little too happy to be, have given all his money away. And as far as I know, he and his son still fly around in, in private planes. So I don't know, George, if you feel that, give all your money to the poor countries and be poor. Hmm? Or maybe, uh, maybe you should pay some reparations for what you did as a young man. Let's see what else he has to say. And what about the American concern that aiding and embedding this move away from the dollar as the world's reserve currency ultimately means a weakening of the U.S. economy? It is not necessarily in our interest uh, to have the dollar as the sole uh, uh, world currency. Uh, because the, as the world economy grows, it needs additional currency. And if the dollar is that additional currency, it means that the U.S. has to have a chronic uh, uh, current account deficit. And that is not appropriate. So I think it's, it's, it's in our interest as well uh, to, uh, to reform the system. Once again, uh, th th he wants to move away from the U.S. dollar as the, as the bulwark of the world economy without uh, concern for what it would do to the American economy, which would be horrible. But finally, the idea is to replace it with one world international economy. I guess one international currency, which I guess he could control, which is kind of the corruption he engaged in, in a lot of the Eastern, well, certainly in Ukraine, which I know about in detail, in gathering information through ANTAC, his so-called uh, not-for-profit, which was under investigation. It was fixed by Biden originally, was put under investigation again. I don't know what's happened to it. Let's see what else he has to say. In the United States, how worried are you about the budget deficit and maybe about the possibility of inflation? Well, uh, um, certainly uh, a decline in the value of the dollar is necessary in order to uh, compensate for the fact that the U.S. economy will remain rather weak, will be a drag on the global economy. Uh, uh, China will emerge as the motor replacing the U.S. consumer. Now, I want you to focus on the fact that that was said in 2010, that the U.S. will become a drag on the world economy. Well, that was true under Democrats. It was true under Obama. It sure is true under Biden, who he elected. 
what about the four years of Trump? Growth four times Obama's, highest employment ever, lowest unemployment ever, particularly for African Americans and Hispanics, a much stronger economy than the rest of the world. And then even with the pandemic, the fastest recovery until Biden's massive giveaway spending to make America dependent and his regulation after regulation after regulation to destroy American businesses and most importantly, taking us from energy independent to energy dependent, which not only kicked the hell out of our economy and jobs for Americans, but it helped to create the war in Ukraine. In addition to his weakness in Afghanistan, and his weakness for the month and a half buildup that Putin did on purpose to test him, and he gave Putin everything Putin needed. Oh, no, no army, no, no, no military, no, 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 no military, no, we, we, we won't engage, we, oh, no, 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 we won't engage. But I want you to note the mentality here. America's going to decline. Inevitably, this is Carter. This is Obama. This is Biden and all the, whatever they are around him. And it's this guy. And I don't know what his motive is. It sure is to kick the hell out of the United States of America. I mean, how could one guy be responsible for so many domestic criminal problems and be responsible for trying to destroy the United States internationally? China will be the the, the engine driving it forward, and the U.S. will be actually a a drag that's being pulled along through a gradual decline in the value of the dollar. That was not happening under Trump. It is happening under Biden. Do you think maybe it's being done deliberately? Uh, 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 Allowing China to be the, uh, the engine that pulls the world? He's predicting this in 2010. The events of the next uh, decade prove that under a Republican, that is not the case. Under a Republican, America can grow robustly. Remember Biden once said, right out of the communist or whatever you want to call it playbook, that we'll never grow at more than 2% and then we were growing at 4 and 5% under under, uh, Trump? And now we've got inflation that's wiping out all our growth under Biden. Look, it's part of their agenda to ruin our economy. He's telling you that. I hope you get it. It's complicated. And it's part of the communist playbook to create inflation and to ruin an economy. I don't know. Do you want to hear it one more time? You want to hear it one more time? Just so you get it in your head. China will be the, the, the engine driving it forward, and the U.S. will be actually a, a drag that's being pulled along through a gradual decline in the value of the dollar. So does that not describe a, a Democrat, socialist, communist policy for the last 30 to 40 years? That America is over? We were over during Carter, remember? The days of America are over. American empire is over. I've got four books about that from liberal Democrats. Reagan changed all that, didn't he? And this guy is predicting that America is going to go straight down, straight down from 2010 on, except he didn't count on 2016 to 2020, which is maybe why they cheated him out of the election. I mean, you got trillionaires that are affected by what Trump did. Trillionaires with the evil motives of this man. This man is counting on a declining America, a rising China, and China's going to rule the world. He's all ready for it. And now we got a president that has been paid more money by China than the United States. I think that Biden's uh, statement today that 
He's going over to Europe to work out a new world order. Puts the title and verifies uh, what I, uh, gosh, what I predicted over a year ago that we were on a road to communism and socialism. And I think the, 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 the podcast that I ask you to go back and look at was toward the end of last year called Express Train to, to Marxism. Uh, every day it gets clearer and clearer. And when you see who the architects are and the hatred they have for our form of government, our economic system, our values, you realize how critical 2022 and 2024 are. Hmm? And please, don't forget my call to action. Send an email to your congressman, your senator, and the White House. And tell them, do not buy oil or gas from Venezuela. From Russia. From Iran. And also, maybe you could add to it, if you give a penny to Iran, like Obama did in cash, millions and millions, we will never vote for a Democrat again, ever. Because you're funding terrorists. And then send me a copy at rudyscommonsense.com because I have a plan for them. And we'll discuss that in future podcasts. And we'll be back very shortly with another podcast. Let's say a silent prayer for the people of, or a prayer, loud prayer if you want, for the people of Ukraine, the good people of Ukraine. Not that, I know people say it's a corrupt government. It is. Nobody knows how corrupt it is better than I do, except I also know how corrupt our government is and how a lot of the corruption of Ukraine was in concert with the Democrat Party and some Republicans. Read Schweitzer's book and Miranda Devine's. But the people don't deserve it. They're good people. I know them. They're educated. They're decent. They're good. They're family-oriented. Most of them are conservative by nature. They love God. And they're willing to sacrifice their lives because they've tasted freedom. We, with all the problems and issues, got them to taste it. That's what America's for. Let's not lose that. Let's not lose that. Let's not lose what our great leaders always valued so much about us. With my hero, Ronald Reagan, so as the city on a hill, right? Which comes from John Winthrop, doesn't it? The beacon of freedom. It's the last great hope for humanity. Boy, are we that. So, so let's make sure in 2022 and 2024, we make ourselves the home of the free and the land of the brave. Both are necessary. Thank you very much for your time. Please take part in the call to action. And of course, God bless America.